Hello guys and welcome to another video by Get Set Python. In this series of videos, we will be looking on one of the cool things you can do with Python and that is web scraping. So many of you might not have any idea about what web scraping is. So there are several ways to extract data or information from any website. Two of the most popular ways are using an API or using web scraping. APIs are generally built on a website that provide you data in a structured manner. Like for Facebook we have Graph API, Twitter and many other websites have their APIs. But what about the websites which don't offer APIs so that you cannot access data in an easy or structured manner. The answer is web scraping. It is one of the easiest method to extract data from any website. And today in this video, we will be looking to how web scraping works and we will extract data from a site named codes to scrape.com. So without any further delay, Let's get started. So you can see that I have opened up this website and it contains lots of codes here. So how about writing a script that can scrape all these codes in one go. So for web scraping, we require some external libraries to be used and so we have to install them using pip command so in your terminal write these commands pip3 install bs4 and the other library that we use and require are request beautiful soup and some parser library so installing them one by one in your command you can see that i have already installed these requirements so it is showing requirement already satisfied but for you it will install all these libraries onto your computer so you require these four libraries bs4 beautiful soup request and lxml i will tell about these once we will get started with the code. So after you finish installing all these dependencies, we can switch to coding part. So first of all, from BS4 import beautiful soup and next import request. So the first step of web scraping is to send an HTTP request to the website you want to get data from and it will get data for you. So creating a response object res is equal to request.get and in the arguments we will pass the URL of the website which we want to scrape. So what it does is it sends an HTTP request and get the data for you. Let's see what we got. So printing the response, it's an response object with 200. That is, the, it is the success code. If you get an error, it will be 404 or some other code. Now, let's see the page source of the web page that we are scraping. So it is a long web page with lots of code and other stuff and we will see what we got in our response so we have printed the response but now we will print response dot text and here we will see that this dot text will print the exact same code that was available on the website and we have got that page source by sending an HTTP request. Now we have all these codes to be scraped. 
but this response object cannot help us to find individual elements and organize this data in a structured manner. So we have to use beautiful soup and create a soup object which will help us to search data in a structured manner by organizing it. So soup is equal to beautiful soup and in the arguments we will pass response.text and lxml where lxml is the parser library to structure data. We will see what we got. So this soup is also the same as the page source we got earlier but it has many methods to search data from it. Now we have to scrape these individual elements from the web page. So inspecting it we can find the exact element that we want. So inspect the element that you want to get the code about. So we can see that I have inspected around this little box and we got this data. We can hover over each code line one by one to see which element it belongs to. So this line belongs to this thing. You can see the blue marks over here which tells which code or which line belongs to which element. So what we require for scraping is this line and this and all these div elements with class code. You can see that as I am hovering it contains some 10 or maybe 12 code divisions. And these div boxes are a required output. So we will find all these boxes using find function. So quote is equal to soup dot find. In the arguments we will pass the type of element that is div in this case. And we will pass the class of this div that is quote. So class colon code and what it does is it find the first div in our source code or in our soup object with class code so let's see what it has so printing the code and running it we can see that it has the exact same code that was in this div but that's not what we actually want we want the text contained inside this div that is our code our tags and the name of author so instead of printing code we will print code dot text and let's see what it got so running this thing, you can see that we got the code, the tags and the author. But you may find that it is not properly ordered because of some new lines, some tabs and other stuff available in the div. So to extract the only code part of this div, we will first change div to span. and in the class we will pass this text class because the code is contained in this span element only. So let's see what we got from this thing. See we got the code only without any formatting or any other stuff. But that's only just one code and what we want is list of codes. All these codes that is these 10 12 codes are what we want. So we will use find all function and it will return us the response of all the spans having this class text. 
we try to print this thing and this is the code for all these span boxes but if we try to print quote.text it will give you an error because the output you got was not a single element but a list of elements and so we have to iterate over each of them using loop to print the text inside them so now printing q dot text you can see that we have got the exact quotes that were available on that page so just making it look a bit nicer and we got the exact same quotes that were on this page in just a single click and these all quotes are same that were available on that web page but we don't only want the quotes but we want the name of author too so for that we will shift it back to finding all the divs of having class quote and then inside each div element we will find the quote and the author separately so we will first extract all these divs element one by one and then we will find the quote and the author separately using find function so you can see that it has two span elements and the first one with class text was of message so first switch back to finding all divs with class that is quote and this will output all the list of these quote elements for you and to find message we have to use find function in this queue that is each element of this div so queue dot find span element with class text you can click here and copy this class and paste it in here so now what it does is it find the span element within the div having class code let's see what it has for us mm, sometimes it may happen that due to many requests or poor internet connection you will get this kind of error we will run it again and yep we got our result all these codes that were available to us are here only now we have to find the author of each quote so in the loop itself we will find span element but it doesn't contain any class so we will move further and we can see that it is inside an element named small uh, it has a class author but since it is the only element present inside the queue with name small we can skip providing the class it is optional we can provide the class or we may not it doesn't affect anything so now printing author dot text we can see that it has got the message as well as the author name so just making this formatting look better and running the script again you can see that we have got the exact same codes with the exact same author names available to us a day without sunshine is like you know night steve martin so all these codes are available to us in just one go and that is web scraping for you so you see how easy it is to scrape any website using beautiful soup and request library.
well let me just show you some more thing so if you want to scrape another page it has a next page also so if you want to scrape that thing what change you have to do you don't have to change anything except the URL that you were sending request that is paste the URL here and let's see see we got the results of this page by just changing the URL because it has the same structure as of the previous page and therefore we don't have to change anything we can scrape multiple pages of this website in just one go maybe we can loop it over and over again and do many things I think this is enough for now for this video but in this whole series of videos regarding web scraping we will be scraping multiple websites making some more cool programs and doing lots of fun so stay tuned guys and get set python thanks for watching guys and we will be back soon with another video in this series bye bye